Hi, I'm back for another uh, development log for Megasplat. Uh, this is the 0.92 version, which should be on the asset store uh, fairly soon. Uh, the major feature that I've added uh, this time is support for Unity terrains. Uh, this is something I originally didn't think I could do until I thought of a, a way to sort of virtualize some of the techniques. And now it looks uh, pretty much exactly the same. Um, so to start, what I'm going to do is walk through creating a train using Unity's train system. Uh, this is, if you've used Unity Train, uh, pretty much how you would uh, do it normally. And uh, what we can do is create a train here. And we get our big flat plane. And then uh, we can come over to our settings and import a raw terrain asset to get a height field in here. Um, so I have one in the Megasplat uh, folder under examples. Uh, terrains and then I now have this uh, terrain 03 uh, height 16 raw file in here. So if I bring this in and I believe I stored this in Mac format um, we can set the parameters on the terrain here and we're going to set the terrain size to be 512 by 512 by maybe I don't know maybe 180 units or something tall. Let's try and import that in. And so this gives us our basic height field. Uh, it does seem a little tall right now, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, change that in the settings, which, let's see here, there we go. Let's make that try like 120 maybe. There we go. That looks a little more reasonable. And we have our standard Unity terrain. Uh, so if you've never done this before, uh, what this does is create this new terrain object here. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in my demo folder. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it Terrain. So I'm feeling rather unoriginal. Um, and then bring that in. So, next we need to set up mega splats on this. And so, what we're going to do is create a material for this terrain. And, and we can change this from the standard shader to our mega splat terrain shader, which is the new shader. And then you'll notice this sort of uh, standard mega spat controls with some slight differences. Uh, so this shader has a, this texture packings uh, available. I'm going to choose the um, normal AO, which I forgot won't actually set until I give it a normal uh, information. So I'm going to go ahead and select my texture array, and I'm going to select that normal uh, SAO texture. And now I can change this to be normal smoothness. I'm going to go ahead and put a macro texture on here. And so we have our diffuse and our normal SAO macro texture. And uh, you can see it's already working on the sphere here. Uh, and so we can go in here and set uh, most of our normal settings um, for like fading the macro texture, uh, interpolation contrast, all of those things. But let's go ahead and apply it to our terrain. So if we select the terrain, uh, what we can do is go to our settings for the material, which this is uh, material here from built-in standard to custom, and then it'll ask for material. So we can go ahead and bring in our material here. And so now we can see that uh, the macro texture is on our terrain, um, but we're not seeing much if we go up uh, to it. Uh, so what we need to do is actually um, create the texture that's going to store the control mask for this. And so if we go to Windows Terrain Painter, this will bring up uh, the terrain painting window, which is uh, almost exactly the same as um, the vertex painting window, but for terrains. And so what it'll say right now is that the terrain material must have a splat control texture assigned to it. So you can create this yourself and set it all up, or you can just hit the Create It For Me button, and this will generate a texture right next to your terrain for you uh, for this use. So you can see it's created this terrain splat control here. Um, and then uh, we need to select a mega splat brush. So we select our diffuse brush. And here we have, um, you can already see here that um, if I were to fill this, uh, you can see it putting the textures on there. Unfortunately, I don't have my terrain set up correctly uh, because I have it ramped all the way to the normal map. So what I'm going to do is change this to splats on top and change this to normal. 
And what that will do is it'll fade uh, in the distance to the macro texture uh, with that setting. So let me just set this to something more reasonable. And we can see how it's, it's fading to the macro texture now uh, as we get into the distance. Um, so what you'd ideally want to do is have a macro texture that's aligned up with this. Um, but now, once we've done this, we can um, flip over here to this paint tool, uh, change our brush visualization, visualization however we'd like, uh, set our various um, flow parameters, and just paint our mega splat texture um, just like we would onto meshes. Um, and I think I have those. Let me just turn these crossfade parameters down quite a bit because they're a little, little much for me. Um, start at 100 and say 400 or better. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we can set the texture scale here. This is, uh, we want to set this much higher because we want to tile that mega splat um, texture so that we get it uh, tiled in here. And we can set our parallax height uh, if we want to do parallax mapping. Um, we can turn that off to be a little cheaper. Uh, you can also set your second texture scale for the second layer if we're doing a two-layer shader. Uh, <coughs> and then to <coughs> excuse me, switch to the two-layer shader, we can just switch that right here. Uh, and you'll notice that there is a actual pointer to that control texture, and there is a, a control size which needs to be set the same. By default, when it creates the texture, it'll create it at the size of the terrain uh, so that you have one-to-one -one with your height map. So now uh, we can select our terrain, and this will also work for multiple terrains. If you have five terrains in your scene that you've stitched together, you can uh, paint on all them as if they're uh, one terrain. And so then we can use all our sort of complex brushes here if we decide we want to uh, fill this with maybe, let's get a little bit of the rock cliff, set our blend layer, and go ahead and fill that, and you can see uh, it works just like the uh, the regular painting. Um, so I also uh, have the utilities tab over here uh, like I do on the uh, vertex painter and you can come here and use the tools for uh, color splat config with this. So we can take that, uh, if you watch my last video, we can take that guide texture and we have the splat configuration here and we can hit bake and this will just bake it to the terrain uh, so that's reading the data from that guide texture and applying it uh, to the terrain for us. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people like to use Unity trains. I never do um, because they uh, they do provide continuous level of detail, which is nice, uh, but they often run a little bit slower than using meshes. So I tend to use meshes and uh, approach those workflows first. Um, but if you prefer to use trains or you have a system uh, that uses terrains already for um, generating, uh, you know, your landscapes, uh, then this will make it easier to use, uh, use those systems with Megasplat. So uh, if you didn't watch my last video, I presented a new tool, uh, which is this color to splat converter. Um, so I reworked this quite a bit. Uh, so the interface is, is pretty different uh, and it has, it has some new features. So uh, the original mode was you take a color in the image and so these are the different color choices here that I've set up for this mapping. And you map it to a mega splat brush. And that brush could be a single texture, it can be a cluster on one of the layers, or it can be a um, <coughs> blended brush that applies to both layers. So this is going to look for the nearest color, uh, you know, within this table uh, from your image, and then apply that terrain wherever it finds, some, wherever that's the closest color. Uh, but I have another mode here which you can change this to an index mapping. And so what this will do is it'll look in the red channel of the, the, the source image and say, okay, if the value is zero, then use this mapping. If the value is one, use this mapping, etc. And so that's nice because um, if you have an external tool and you're able to script that tool to output your terrain data as, hey, grass is zero, and dirt is one, and you know rock is going to be two, whatever information you want, into the texture, then you can just quickly map that to a single texture, a texture cluster, or to one of these blended brushes, uh, and then splat that over your whole terrain all at once. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's been some other uh, smaller features and fixes and things like that added 
uh, but the train support was the main thing uh, that I wanted to get into this because, uh, again, a lot of people like to use Unity trains. Uh, and I've tried to provide uh, essentially the exact same workflow uh, regardless of whether you're working on trains or meshes. Um, and so that's nice because it means that, uh, you know, you can use whatever you want and you get all these nice brushes and things uh, to play with and you can just paint on your landscape and get the sort of um, effect you want without having to uh, worry about, you know, the uh, differences between trains and, um, and meshes. Uh, so yeah, so I hope you're enjoying the tool. If you have ideas or feedback or anything, I'd love to hear it uh, and hope you enjoyed the videos. Uh, thanks.